Greetings, everyone. I'm Scott Butcher, and today I'm talking about how to improve your virtual presentation skills to engage your audience. Virtual presentations have increasingly been an important part of the business world, and recent current events have greatly accelerated the use of virtual presentations. A presentation can be as simple as a one-to-one -one communication through an electronic medium. Maybe you are viewing another person on video, or maybe you are sharing a screen or scrolling through a slide deck. We are always presenting ideas and concepts, recommendations, to introduce our firms, or even to interview for new projects. In fact, there are presentations for $100 million projects happening right now. So whether we are presenting virtually to one person, or we are trying to land a job or win a project, we need to up our game so we don't lose the personal connection that comes from being in front of one another. Think about the last webinar you attended. Were you interested and engaged? Or were you doing something else, looking at your phone, responding to email, reading or reviewing something? One of the most challenging things about presenting virtually is the disconnect that often happens, especially when you are not viewing other people's faces. Tools like Zoom, Skype, and FaceTime can alleviate some of this particularly for one-to-one -one conversations or even small meetings. But for webinars with dozens or even hundreds of people, that's often not possible. While there are challenges for presenters, there are also challenges for your audience. Monotone presenters can be brutal to listen to, while static slides almost invite the audience to tune out. And if the audience isn't paying attention, why are you even presenting virtually? So what's a virtual presenter to do? Here's a few tips to make your virtual presentations more engaging, whether you're presenting to one person or 100 people. For starters, it begins and ends with your passion. You must be passionate about your topic or your audience won't be. And while this applies to in-person presentations, it doubly applies to virtual presentations, where the audience has great difficulty in reading your nonverbals, particularly when you aren't even on video, like a slide deck with voiceover. You've probably heard the statistic that only 7% of a presentation is verbal and 93% is nonverbal. It's an off-quoted figure that 55% is body language, 38% is tone, and 7% is the spoken word. How can you demonstrate passion if these numbers are really true? Fortunately, this formula is not absolute and came from a study completed almost 50 years ago. But it does demonstrate the importance of our tone and vocal variety when giving a presentation, especially a virtual presentation. You need to exaggerate your vocal inflections. This is absolutely critical. Change your tone and your volume. Go up and down with your phrasing. Use hand gestures like I do to emphasize your points. Talk with your hands even if you're not on video. When you talk with your hands, your voice typically changes more than if you are just sitting down with folded hands. I can make a point or I can make a point. If you're on video coming from a phone, laptop, or a camera on your monitor, you'll be somewhat limited in how much freedom you have. But if you're presenting a slide deck, stand up. Pretend you're on a stage. Our friends at GraceWorks have taught us to be big and bold, which is exceptional advice for any presentation, especially virtual ones. It is also critical to focus on enunciating your words. Remember that a T sounds like T, not D. Is it important or important? 
make sure you focus on proper enunciation so it doesn't sound like you are mumbling. Remember, being on the audience side of a virtual presentation is difficult as it is. Don't make it more difficult by mumbling. Be cognizant of your accent. Most people have some sort of accent. Sometimes it comes across in almost everything you say, and other times, simply in the pronunciation of certain words. And we're often not even aware of it because it sounds normal to us. I never realized I had an accent until I started presenting around the country. On several occasions, I've had people come up to me and say, are you from central Pennsylvania? Are you from Pennsylvania Dutch country? They proceeded to tell me that they recognized my accent. I'm like, what accent? I don't have an accent. And then I started making recordings and videos for some of my presentations. And it made me cringe. I have certain words that I say oddly, and it drives me nuts. Once upon a time, I thought it would be cool to do voiceover work. And then I heard myself talking and I was like, oh, hell no. So I try to be cognizant of how I pronounce certain words. The reason is that I want to make listening to me as easy on the audience as possible. I don't want them thinking, what did Scott just say? Because when they do this, they are missing whatever I say next. It doesn't mean you need to abandon that beautiful regional accent you have. Just pay attention to certain pronunciations that may cause a little bit of confusion. This is especially true when you're not on video because sometimes your body language can help to interpret the words. When you're on camera, the next tip is to actually look at the camera. We all struggle with this. We talk to the screen. Think of your last Zoom meeting or Skype call. You were looking at the other person on the screen, right? Weren't you? With in-person presentations, eye contact is critical. The same holds true for virtual presentations. Move your eyes from the screen to the camera. That way you're actually looking, looking at the person on the other side of the screen. Again, this is relevant whether it's just for one person or for thousands of people on the other end. Speaking of being on camera, be sure to think about your lighting. We've all seen way too many silhouettes of talking heads on our computer screens. Be sure there is no lighting behind you. Ideally, you want the lighting to come from the front, maybe slightly angled. In my setup, I actually have two cheap video lights, front left and front right, and you can probably see the reflection on my glasses. You're probably not going to have this, but it doesn't mean that you should ignore your lighting. Check yourself on video before you are in front of a virtual audience. Natural lighting is preferable because your household lighting may cast an unwanted syrupy yellow cast. Avoid fluorescent lighting at all costs. Rather, sit close to a window and let the natural light bathe you. It's more flattering and provides better overall lighting. Just don't present in direct sunlight. Now, let's talk about your slides. So many of our virtual presentations entail slide decks or screen sharing. That's why it is so important to think of things from the perspective of your audience. One of the things that drives me crazy, especially when I'm on the audience side of a webinar, is when the presenter puts up a bullet heavy slide and leaves it up there for five minutes. How <laughs> freaking boring. We're used to moving pictures. Television, movies, YouTube, video with things constantly in motion. That's why everyone hates PowerPoint. These lazy ass presenters open the software and populate the default templates. That makes miserable viewing when you are live in person and doubly brutal for virtual presentations. So make a concerted effort to change slides frequently for the sake of your audience. If you show them a slide like this and leave it on the screen for several minutes, you've effectively asked them to tune out and do something else. Folks, you are presenting here and incorporating audio and visual together. You're not on a podcast. 
You're not on radio. Don't treat your presentation like you are. I've delivered 60 minute webinars with 140 slides. Now, before you freak out, understand that I really don't have 140 slides. I'm building the slides in pieces. Take a look at this slide. It is a typical boring slide created with the default PowerPoint template. Now imagine if you had this on your screen for several minutes while I talk to it. I might have great points to say about vocal inflections and accents, but would you still be listening to me after the first minute? Conversely, what if I used these visuals instead? A slide that introduces the topic instead of a header above a bullet list. I'm using a visual with just a few words. To be honest, when I present in person, I prefer the strong visuals with a couple of words on any given slide. I'm the presentation. The slide deck is not the presentation. However, when I'm presenting virtually, I typically incorporate more detail. Now, instead of having a boring bullet list, I'm making it a bit more graphical. So in this slide, I'm talking about tone. And then when I'm ready to talk about volume, I move to this slide. Finally, I put up the accent slide as I discuss my recommendations. I've given the viewers four slides instead of one. I'm using the same visual in every slide to tie them together, and I'm only using one word for each of my bullets. Do you know what happens when you show a slide with all of the information on it? Your audience reads ahead and tunes you out. And don't blame them because we all do this. You'll also note that I used different slides for these topics earlier in this video. There's so many different approaches, but the key here is to be more visual and to keep the slide deck moving forward. By the way, these are four separate slides. Don't rely on your software's animation features if you are screen sharing. If something can go wrong, it will. And if you are uploading to third-party presentation sites, animations might not even be an option. Here's another example. This is from a webinar I recently delivered for the Society for Marketing Professional Services. It includes a series of slides that I went through, each one building upon the prior one. For virtual presentations or online training, I love using an infographic approach. A small icon that represents the topic with just a few words built into a larger graphic. It is easy for the audience to understand, hopefully, they are listening to my words because I'm not giving them the opportunity to read ahead. And the visual is reinforcing the point or the points that I'm trying to make. I am not a graphic designer by any stretch of the imagination, so I actually use third-party resources for these infographics. Now, I'd like to share advice from my favorite distant learning subject matter expert, Natalie Gossard. Natalie is the Vice President of Component Relations for the Society for Marketing Professional Services and has worked with countless webinar presenters, always offering them great advice. Some of Natalie's tips include engage with polls, handouts, Q&A. This makes it more interactive for your audience. Invite a co-presenter, which can make the presentation more engaging for the presenters and the audience alike. Visualize an audience in front of you. I've had people sit across my desk from me while I presented, so I had someone to look at. Other people have told me they've printed out heads and taped them on their office walls to have something to look at. Draft notes or a script. This is so you don't get stuck on a point, but also the process of creating the notes or the script helps you better remember the content and doubles as a great reference if you ever give the presentation again. Practice and time your content. This is particularly important if you have a time-sensitive presentation. Enlist a monitor to assist. Your monitor is in some ways your presentation lifeguard and can help take some of the stress off of you. Thanks for the tips, Natalie. This is great stuff. I want to expand upon the idea of having a co-presenter or even a team of presenters. You really, really need to practice. 
know who is going to talk to each concept, graphic, or slide. Rehearse, then rehearse again. When you're able to co-present in person, you can rely on one another's visual cues. You can't do that when you are presenting virtually. Know who is advancing the slides if you are using slides. Know your cues for when to come in and when to stop. Continual verbal handoffs can be awkward and can also cut into your presentation time. How many times do you want to hear someone say, uh, okay, Bob, do you want to, you want to talk to this slide? I haven't really discussed technology, but there's a few things I want to mention. First, the mute button. It is great to be on mute when you're not speaking, but also incredibly embarrassing to start speaking while you're still on mute. Your audience hears the silence. They wonder what the heck is happening. Is the technical issue on your end or is it on their end? I recently sat through a webinar by a company that offers online teaching platform resources. There were too many awkward handoffs between the co-presenters. One of the presenters continually forgot the mute button was on and had to be reminded by the other presenter. And one of the presenters, the audience doesn't know who, kept getting email notifications. Turn them off. If you must keep your email open and running, be sure to disable the sound notifications. How annoying is it to hear ding in the middle of someone trying to make a point? It is very distracting to your audience. With all the Skype and Zoom television interviews we've been seeing lately, this seems to happen all the time. You also need to think about your internet connection, audio connection, microphone, and video camera. It is ideal to be on a wired internet connection if possible. As soon as you start relying on Wi-Fi or mobile data, there's far more things that can go wrong. However, you might not have that option. My home office is in the basement. The router in my house is two floors above me. So I did put several Wi-Fi extenders around the house to boost the signal to my basement. Fortunately, I haven't had any problems with live virtual presentations yet. Likewise, the most ideal audio connection is a wired phone. That's the most reliable and probably the best audio quality. However, again, that is not always an option. You may not even have a landline where you are, or maybe your phone is coming wirelessly through your cable TV plan. But a phone is still typically going to offer superior audio than your computer. Usually when I present a webinar, I use phone audio. However, I'm using a cell phone, which again is not the ideal situation. I don't have a choice. I don't have a landline in my office. So we've now reached the show and tell portion of our video. You can certainly use the cheap microphone that comes attached to earbuds in a pinch. At least the microphone is a lot closer to your mouth than if you're using your computer's audio. I've been using this Bluetooth headset for a couple of years. It's never let me down during a webinar. However, I recently upgraded my cell phone and for some reason, sometimes I get weird echoes now. So I went old school with a wired headset. It's wired to my phone. I feel like a telephone operator every time I wear it, but this works. For this video, I'm using a lapel microphone. It's wired to my camera and gives me solid quality audio, better than I can get from my camera's onboard microphone. And I also have this USB microphone that plugs directly into my MacBook. I typically use it for non-formal Zoom or Skype meetings, or honestly, for happy hour Zoom sessions as well. It is still a far better microphone than just using my computer's onboard microphone. I wanted to get into a little more detail here because above all else, you need high quality audio. Your only video camera option might be the little one on your laptop or your cell phone. Or maybe you have a nicer USB video camera or can even connect a GoPro. But you have to make sure you have the highest quality audio possible. It doesn't need to be expensive. In my experience, your audience will forgive your lack of high quality video, but if they can't hear you clearly, you're done. So there you have it. Some thoughts for being a more engaging virtual presenter. 
Hopefully you have some new ideas to use the next time you're presenting virtually. And remember, if you have a co-presenter or even a team of co-presenters, everyone must be on the same page. I'm Scott Butcher, and I help design and construction firms improve their marketing and business development acumen through consulting, training, and facilitation. Thank you so much for your time today, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.